Hey all, my name is Paul Borowski and I am the owner of Quality Business Plan as well as the author of Beginner's Guide to Understanding Financial Statements and Financial Ratios, which I have published online at Amazon.com. And what I'd like to do today is to give you all some tips and tricks on analyzing Starbucks 2021 financial statements and financial ratios. Specifically, you know, give you all some tips and tricks on doing a financial anal analysis for Starbucks most recent um, financial statements. All right, so with that said, let me go ahead and set your expectations for the video. Uh, the way the video is going to play out is I'm going to give you all some um, some background about myself, who I am, why do I think I'm qualified to give you all tips and tricks on analyzing if, uh, Starbucks financial statements. And then from there, I'm going to give you all some you know insights on you know some thoughts and ideas and tips and tricks on the um, Starbucks income statement, a uh, line item from the Starbucks balance sheet, and then also line item from Starbucks um, financial ratios. So I'm just going to give you some tips and tricks for each one of the, you know, a starting point for each one of the financial statements. And then from there, we'll wrap it up and call it a day. All right. So with that said, let's talk a little bit about me. Then the rest of the time is going to be all about Starbucks and doing a little bit of financial analysis and dissecting those financial statements for um, Starbucks for the last five years. All right, so first and foremost, I am a professional financial modeler. I, I love writing business plans, but my passion is doing financial models for small businesses. Um, as a hobby, I do analyze you know, public company financial statements, usually the top 15, top 20 companies in, in the US. I'll go ahead and take a look at the financial statements, plug them into my little financial model, and then you know, you know, print out and you know, publish some you know, thoughts and ideas uh, of a financial analysis for each one of those companies. So one of my things is I'm a financial modeler, so I got a lot of experience in analyzing financial statements. That's pretty much where I'm going to go with that. Next, I am also a published author on Amazon.com. If you want to go ahead and check out some of my books, I, one of my ones I just published is A Beginner's Guide to Understanding Financial Statements and Financial Ratios. Again, a lot of experience in financial statements, financial ratios, analysis. Um, so, well, I published a book on it. So if, if you want to check it out, feel free. Enjoy. Love it. Finally, I am an adjunct professor and subject matter expert in both business and finance. So I, I do have some education behind me. I'm a doctoral candidate and um, MBA and so on and so forth. All right. With that said, infomercial over. Let's talk about Starbucks 2021. All right. So just recently, Starbucks released their financial statements, um, income statement balance sheet, and I've calculated some financial ratios based on that information. And so tip number one, when you're analyzing the income statement for Starbucks, um, you know, make sure you look for some trends. So for this example right here, what I've done is I've um, calculated or I've summarized the, the revenues for Starbucks over the last five years, 2017, we got $22.38 billion. And um, over the next uh, two years, it, it grows moderately. Um, ending 2016 at 26, um, 2019 at 26.5 billion, 2020, 2020, it does drop a little bit in the revenues. However, after that 2021, it does bounce back up. So we've got some twists, we've got some turns in the revenues, but that really doesn't go tell, tell us a whole heck of a lot because, you know, these are just numbers and we see they're going up, we see them going down, but we don't know by what percentage. So what I like to do when I analyze the financial revenues for my Starbucks company report, what I do is I'll compare it to revenue growth. So for example, 2018, we got some revenue growth of about 10%, which is actually for a multinational corporation that is in the mature phase, mature phase of their business cycle. They're doing pretty good. Growth slowed down in 2019 to 7.2%. In 2020, pandemic hit, we all know that. Growth dropped through the floor, re reduction of 11%. However, 2021, a company came back strong um, and they hit their revenue growth by 23.6%. So overall, on average, they've got about 7.5% growth rate. And comparing that to the industry, they're doing above average. They're not doing great. They're not hitting out at a park. They're not like an Apple where I had a 33% growth rate in the last year. Um, but they doing pretty good. Seven and a half percent is nothing to sneeze at. So, you know, one of the good trends is they're doing pretty good on the average growth rate. And the last year growth rate was actually very well is is very good as well. You know, 23.6 percent growth rate is, is pretty strong. So those are a couple of good ones. Um, not so good. Um, the con they had a contraction in 2020. You know, yeah, the pandemic hit and, and you know, it caught a lot of the multinationals off guard. Um, they didn't know how to react, and, you know, with the shutdowns and, you know, with drive throughs open and, and dining rooms closed. 
a lot of changes and the executive teams were trying to figure out and feel out you know, what was going to work and what was not going to work. So that 2020 contra um, contraction is a little bit of a concern, but it, it's not too bad. Um, one of the things I do not like is the consistency. We've got some 10% growth and we got 7% growth and a contraction and then, you know, really good growth. There's no consistency. I, I, I like consistency. I like to see consistency in the revenue growth. I like to see consistency in the cost. When you see consistency, then you're going to perceive less risk involved with an organization. If they're growing year after year after year after year, well, guess what? That tells us they're a pretty solid company. When you've got a lot of fluctuation, whether it be good, bad, it's going to introduce risk because that's what risk is. Is It's just you know fluctuation. How, how much does something fluctuate from one point in time to another? So with that said, a little bit of risk involved with this because of the lack of consistency makes me a little bit nervous. All right, tip number two is going to be focus on the balance sheet. So again, um, in my industry analysis for Starbucks, um, what I've done is I snuck a peek at the um, the balance sheet. And for the balance sheet, one of the things that caught my eye was the inventory. So in the inventory, we see that you know in 2018 it's increasing, 2019 it's increasing. In 2020, well, sales decreased, so also their inventory decreased in line, which is good. It went in tandem. And then inventory increased again in 2021. However, these numbers are not telling us a, a full story because there's, there's no basis and no comparison. What I like to do is compare the inventory to sales. So in 2017, we had 6.1% of in, um, inventory as compared to sales. It did drop to 2020 to 4.9% and then bounce back up to 5.5%. The trend that's important in my most humble of opinions is 18, 19, and 2021. We are in the, the five and a half to 5.8% range, a 0.3 range in these three to last four years. That's a pretty tight range, which tells me that Starbucks is really good with controlling their inventory. They're, they're able to you know, project what their inventory is going to be um, you know, based on the sales and keep it pretty much in line. So that's, in my opinion, is a real strong trend. It shows me that the management team um, and the executive team and the management team in the stores, they've really got control over the inventory. All right, so um, also for a good thing for the trend is the consistency. You know, we're consistent, consistent, and consistent. Low, consist low fluctuation makes low um, perceived interest. Low perceived interest means happy investors. And then finally, the four-year trend, except for 2020, which is a little bit low, and then 2017 was a little bit high. Um, we have a lot of consistency, and that consistency is, again, is a good thing um, when we're looking for trends in the analysis of the balance sheet. All right, and then finally, the financial ratios. So tip number three, financial ratios for, oops, I've got Apple here when we're looking at Starbucks. There we go, problem fixed. All right, so for Starbucks 2021, um, the ratio that I chose, so I'll go ahead and discuss in this little video endeavor of mine, is the current ratio. As we all know, hopefully, um, if, if not, this is a great learning learning opportunity for you. Um, but the current ratio, what we like to see for most um, businesses, the gold standard in finance is 1.0. That means that our current assets are very close to the current liabilities. Um, and so the, the closer those numbers are, the closer the number is going to be after you divide them to, to one. So in 2017, we're at 1.25, which means they had more current assets than they had current liabilities, which means they had enough revenues coming in and assets to cover their current liabilities for the next 12 months. In 2018, their current ratio jumped up to 2.2. This tells me that the organization did a horrendous job utilizing their current assets. They could have either you know, paid out more dividends. They could have um, invested some of that money in long-term growth in some property plant equipment. Do something other than keep your assets idle in current assets as compared to current liabilities. So mismanaged in my most humble of opinion. 2019, they did a little bit better of a job. Um, they dropped the current at ratio below um, 1.0, which means their current liabilities exceeded the current assets. When we have an organization that's generating cash on a daily basis, like Starbucks and also Walmart, your current ratio, you very well could operate at a, at a lower current ratio, whether it be 0.9 or even a 0.8. 
Um, so that just tells us that you're really optimizing your current assets because you're shifting them into long-term investments and you're, you're making your company run more efficiently. I like this right here, 2000, um, 2019.92. In my most humble of opinions, this is, optimi this is optimized. Good job though, the management for this one year out of five. 2020, their current ratio starts to slide up to 1.06. And then 2021, their current ratio is slid up, it slides up to again 1.2. So what I'm seeing here is I've got a current ratio of 0.92, optimized, less optimized, and then less optimized again. Not a good looking trend. I don't like where this is going, you know, especially when they've got a history of a 2.2 current ratio. Um, it's not, it's not showing that they're, they're optimizing their assets. Not only that, but the consistency here is just, it's all over the board. You know, you get 2.2 and then the next year 0.9, you know, give me some consistency, make me feel good and warm and fuzzy to invest in this organization to know that next year I can, you know, it's can confidently predict where the company is going to be with looking at this. I don't have that feeling. I, I'm, you know, we, we got revenues growing. Yes. You know, but internally with their, their, their management of their current assets as compared to current liabilities. And then we're looking at the balance sheet with their inventory, which always looked pretty good. Um, but the current ratio, it's, it's not giving me a good feeling. Um, I'm, I'm not, not a big fan of how they've, they're, they're um, doing this. What would be better is if they're able to get a tight ratio, current ratio between 0.92 and 0.1.06. If they can get that for a long-term trend, that would be optimal, my, my most humble of opinions. All right. So hopefully this little bit of insight into the, um, you know, just some tips and tricks on analyzing the financial statements and financial ratios for Starbucks was helpful. If you do want some more um, information, whether it be just, you know, the, the um, summarized income statement balance sheet, calculated financial ratios without an analysis, uh, check out my beginner's guide to Starbucks financial analysis 2021. Um, it has a lot of good information in there. It just does not have analysis of by myself. In Starbucks financial report by my, again, myself, I do include everything that's in the beginner's guide, except I also include analysis of each, most of the line items in the income statement, most of the line items in the balance sheet. And then I also talk about, you know, 15 to 20 different financial ratios um, for Starbucks as well for the last five years. So a lot of in the analysis to give you all a starting point and some thoughts and ideas, how the trends are happening, you know, um, from a, a perspective of the balance sheet income statement and the ratios. All right. So in summary, um, be careful in summary, be careful with your formulas. When you calculate your financial ratios um, and you check out online and, and you're trying to you know, get some financial ratios um, for the formulas, you're going to find that your financial ratio formulas, they're going to vary. You know, one website might say, well, you know, calculate this financial ratio this way, but then your instructor is going to tell you to calculate your financial ratio this way. So there's a lot of thoughts and ideas out there on how to calculate financial ratios. And there's no consistency. Um, you know, your, your financial, you know, finance guys, you know, we're, we're not, you know, we're, we're trying to predict the future here and we're trying to, you know, put some twists and turns in there um, to better help us with those predictions. And with that, you're going to get some twists and turns to the financial ratios. So be careful with the ratios that you're using. And then also remember in financial analysis, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And what I mean by that is an organization might be taking on more and more and more debt. One person is going to say, well, that's fantastic because they're making money off of borrowed money. I am going to say, no, 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 no. I don't like that. There's too much debt. You're not going to, if in times of recession, you're going to have a hard time, you know, making those interest payments. Um, not a good thing. So just keep that in mind that if somebody says this is good, you might say this is bad, but just, it's not that, you know, whether it's good or bad in your opinion, it's your justification for the opinion. So make sure you justify when you're doing up your um, financial analysis. And then fine. Um, finally, if you're looking for a guide or a report to help you with your financial analysis, um, make sure to check out my website, qualitybusinessplan.com forward slash Starbucks financial statement and financial ratios analysis. I do have a beginner's guide that does not have analysis in there. And then I've got a financial report that does um, provide you all with my analysis. All right. So hopefully this information was helpful. As always, have a great day. And if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up on YouTube. Thank you.